Santa Cruz has just launched this brand new bullet, which is a mile munching, 170 millimeter travel VPP suspension Shimano EP8 e-bike. Continuing the theme for a lot of electric bikes recently, the new bullet is a mullet wheeled bike. That means the rear wheel is 27.5 inches and the front one is 29 inches. Fortunately, the wheels are wrapped in Maxxis double down rubber, which means that the sidewall casings of the tires are mega thick to cope with the extra demands and weights and speeds of e-bikes. Those who remember the Santa Cruz Bullet of old that was first launched in 1996 will remember it fondly. Back then it had 152 millimeters of rear wheel travel with a single pivot design and was compatible with up to 160 millimeter travel forks and certainly blurred the boundaries between downhill and all mountain. Fast forward to today and the 2021 Bullet is still blurring boundaries but quite a lot has changed on the new bike. With that in mind, Santa Cruz says it has gnar taming capabilities. Now, I'm not quite sure what they mean by that, but reading between the lines, I think they're trying to say that it's able to ascend the steepest climbs around and tackle the gnarliest descents you can throw it at. Firstly, let's have a brief overview of what's on offer with the new Bullet. It's been made from Santa Cruz's CC top spec carbon fiber. And because it's a mullet bike, Santa Cruz say they've managed to blend the stability and grip of the front wheel with the playful handling of the smaller rear one. There's space for a bottle cage mount inside the front triangle. There's a down tube protector on the underside of the bottom bracket. And there's also integrated chain slap protection on the chain and seat stays. Also in the down tube is Shimano's 630 watt hour battery that's been neatly integrated. The battery is removable however, but you will need to take off the cover on the underside of the down tube. Impressively, Santa Cruz backs the brand new Bullet, like a lot of their other frames, with a lifetime warranty for the original owner on the frame, the bearings and the linkages. Additionally, Santa Cruz states that there are no proprietary parts on the bullet. That means if you're riding in Timbuktu or Stranger Things the upside down, you might be able to find some replacement parts if your bullet breaks down. Because this is made from Santa Cruz's high grade CC carbon fiber, it means that the carbon has been cured and laid up at the same time. For you and I, this means that Santa Cruz has managed to reduce the frame's weight without sacrificing its strength. Additionally, the front triangle of the bullet is made from carbon fiber weave that continuously wraps around all of the tubes. That means it's made from one single piece of carbon fiber. This, Santa Cruz says, has two advantages. Firstly, loads and impacts can be distributed throughout the bike's structure. Secondly, the bike's strength is improved by integrating the shock mounts, the pivot mounts, the dropouts and the brake mounts, rather than having them as individual pieces that are bonded to the main frame. Santa Cruz goes further. They say that their CC frames have no filler or gaps on the carbon on the insides of the tubes. They also say that their CC bikes have no rider weight limits and are seriously confident about how strong their frames are. Because the new Bullet is an electric mountain bike, it's impossible to ignore the motor. This one is fitted with Shimano's brand new EP8 system with a 630 watt hour battery. The new EP8 motor has a claimed peak torque of 85 newton meters and 250 watts of assistance. On top of this, it has been reduced in weight to 2.6 kilograms from the outgoing steps model and also has 36% less drag. The motor has three assistance modes, 
there's Eco, Trail and Boost. And each of these modes is entirely customizable in Shimano's eTube app. This is the top spec Bullet CC and it has Shimano's EP8 motor. The lowest spec Bullet CCR has Shimano's E7000 motor that has the same peak power, 250 watts, as the EP8 version, but has less torque at 60 newton meters. The new Bullet has 170 millimeters of rear wheel travel that's controlled by Santa Cruz's VPP suspension system. Now Santa Cruz told us that the Bullet is available with both air and coil shocks. This suggests that the suspension kinematic is progressive enough to counteract the linear coil spring suspension. Now on to the geometry. The Bullet's geometry is confidently modern, but not extreme. The Bullet range has four sizes, ranging from medium to extra, extra large. The medium has a 450 millimeter reach and the extra, extra large has a 515 millimeter reach. Each size in the four size range has a 64 degree head angle and a 77 degree effective seat tube angle. Wheelbases start at 1,239 millimeters for the medium bike. On the extra, extra large bullet, the wheelbase is 1,328 millimeters. However, all of the sizes in the four size range have 449 millimeter chainstays. There are four models in the Bullet range, starting with the Bullet CCR. That bike costs £6,899 or $7,499. It's specced with SRAM's 12-speed NX Eagle, a RockShox Zeb fork and a RockShox Super Deluxe rear shock. As I've already mentioned, the lowest spec Bullet has Shimano's E7000 Steps motor. The range topping Bullet CC we've got here uses Shimano's EP8 motor and is specced with Fox's 38 factory fork with Grip2 damper and RockShox's Super Deluxe Ultimate rear shock, both with 170 millimeters of travel. It has SRAM's X01 12 speed drivetrain and retails for a whopping £10,499 or $11,499. What do all of these numbers and features add up to? Let's talk about the climbing performance, not least of which because it seriously impressed me. I found there was copious amounts of grip and control and the bullet let me ascend trails that I didn't think would be possible on a human powered bike. Now this ascending prowess wasn't one specific part, it was definitely a culmination of the bike's geometry, its spec and the impressive Shimano motor. First up, the long 449mm chainstays, when combined with the bike's wheelbase and front centre, put my weight really central over the bottom bracket. This helped me tackle a sense with ease. It meant I didn't need to shift my weight forwards on the bike when climbing to help counteract front wheel lift and to keep control as I was going uphill. I found the eco mode on Shimano's steps motor when set up with the most amount of assistance in the eTube app to provide the best climbing performance when it got particularly steep or technical. Because the assistance and power it delivered was easy to control, it made ascending a much calmer affair and I wasn't constantly worried about the rear wheel spinning every time I hit a slippy route or a loose rock. Along with the motor, the ascending prowess was helped by the suspension's compliance. Although it would be fair to say that the rear suspension bobs a fair amount under power, especially at lower cadences when standing up, this also translates to an incredibly plush and grip focused ride. And because it's an e-bike, you needn't worry too much about power loss with bob. The motor overcomes the amount of energy you would lose otherwise from bobbing the suspension. 
Also key is the comfort factor. Because on an e-bike you spend a large majority of the time tackling climbs whilst seated, the bullet suspension being nice and soft and supple really improved seated climbing comfort. This comfort was not only important on steep ascents, also on flatter or more traversy sections of trail, you're able to sit down and turn the pedals whilst reaping the benefits of the soft suspension providing grip and comfort. However, I would say the top tube is quite long on the bullet and I found my position to be fairly aggressive compared to other more gravity focused enduro bikes. Although this slightly more aggressive position is definitely a benefit on the climbs on flatter sections with more weight being put through my hands rather than my backside, it did cause fatigue over really long rides. I certainly think the Maxxis Double Down DHR2 rear tyre is a great match to the bullet. It provided plenty of carcass stability and the Max Grip compound loads of traction, even over greasy and slippy terrain. I didn't find the WTB saddle particularly comfy for my preferences. It has quite a rounded profile and although there is a comfort channel groove in the middle of the saddle, its highest point is still in the centre of the saddle. I found this put undue pressure on my perineum rather than through my sit bones. And for a bike that costs 10 and a half grand, it would be nice to have the option to spec contact points of your preference. I obviously had to find out how long Shimano's 630 watt hour battery will last. When used exclusively in eco mode, I managed a 37 and a half kilometer ride and ascended just under 1800 meters on one single charge. Just as I clocked over 1,755 meters of climbing, the Shimano step system entered its eco battery saving mode that allowed me to get home with minimal assistance. It's certainly worth noting that these figures are merely a guide and people who weigh differently, ride different conditions, different weather temperatures, etc., will have an effect on how long a battery will last. So we know the Bullet is a great climber, but what's its performance like on the descents? The Bullet certainly doesn't hide its 21.25 kilogram weight. It's a total plow bike and on rough, fast and gnarly terrain, you can point it where you want to go and the bike deals with the terrain really well. Not only did the suspension suppleness help on the climbs, it also helps on the descents to deliver control and poise and traction exactly when you need it. Because the suspension manages to smooth trails with total proficiency, rock gardens and root stream cambers are dispatched with ease. Most impressively, the suspension is also incredibly well equipped to deal with big hits, such as drop-offs to flat. Once the trails got a little slower and more technical, however, the bike's weight was a little trickier to handle. On a lighter bike, you'd be able to suddenly choose to jump up to one side of the trail or the other. On the Bullet, this wasn't possible and commitment was required much earlier on because of its weight. Although the Bullet is one of the slackest electric mountain bikes out there, I did feel like the head tube angle could have been a little bit slacker without any detrimental effect on the rest of the bike's performance. This caused a bit of twitchiness when it was pretty steep. Because the bike was normally so capable, I was a bit disappointed to find that when it got really, really gnarly, it couldn't quite cope. That said, the Fox 38 chassis and damping did provide exceptional amounts of support when pushing hard on steeper trails. I've used plenty of Code RSC brakes that are spec on this bike. The front one's got a 220mm rotor and the rear has a 200. However, I didn't think that these were quite big enough and I did end up overwhelming the brakes and their bite fading on longer descents. Elsewhere, I found that the dropper post had just about enough travel to get out of the way on the descents and be high enough for the climbs but only just, and I think Santa Cruz could spec a longer travel post on the bike. 
I had absolutely no complaints about the carbon fiber reserve wheels that are spec to this top spec model. They didn't feel harsh, equally they didn't feel like they were wandering or wobbling around under the bike's weight. As a bonus, they resisted dings well and I certainly bottomed the rim out on quite a few rocks with no damage. Overall then, it was the Bullet's climbing prowess that impressed me the most. Pointing uphill, I almost felt unstoppable as it delivered enormous amounts of grip and comfort with controllable power from that EP8 motor. The large 630 watt battery when combined with the Eco mode certainly gave me enough range to not get battery anxiety whilst out on all day epic rides. On the descents, there's certainly no denying how capable the bullet is, especially when it's fast and flat out. It tackled gnarly lines whilst ironing out trail chatter with the utmost of composure and put a lot of other bikes to shame. However, as I said before, slower or tighter trails needed to be taken with quite a lot less gusto and steeper tracks could overwhelm the geometry. What do you think about the 2021 Santa Cruz Bullet? Has it answered your prayers for a hard hitting enduro e-bike? Or are you still dead set against electric bikes in the first place? Let us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get a notification every time we upload a new video.